no future means no limits. If you have no limits, you can do whatever you want because you have no future. So I'm living right now. So limited editions, we produce them in very small or limited quantities. We only make them once, and then that's it, no more. We take a lot of pride, put a lot of attention to detail, and that's where Monique comes in. You know, if I was looking for targets for what, what I was trying to do um, with the no future, I might... What's I mean, critical like, in the beginning is just understanding the story and what we're trying to communicate. The game designers are creating these worlds, right? They're actually building them out. And we get a chance to translate it into a physical object. We saw the E3 2018 trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. It, of course, it like blew everyone away. The title is, is just so cool. It's, it's really pushing the boundaries on style. And it's so kind of in your face and punchy and like electric. So we spent a lot of time with that video, dissecting it and figuring out like, what are the key design elements? We noticed things like the mech scene and the, the cyber enhancements. There are a lot of different elements to the lighting style, like how V's face was framed with that lit collar and how when he turned around, you saw the samurai logo glowing on the back of his leather jacket. And then there were the Quadra car taillights that were super futuristic. So Monique shows up and she's got like, hey, I've got you know four different designs. We could, they're completely different directions. So we had, you know, the concept of all these uh, panels coming together from different pieces of equipment to create a kitsch style console. One of the first things we had to do is figure out how to define these panels exactly. You can see the laser etch marks in this piece really clearly. We ended up putting a piece of mylar over the product and laser etching through the mylar. You can see it, it peels off, but that allows us to um, go back and paint inside of the etch marks. All the different color panels are actually silkscreen of different inks. There's probably 30 different variations of each of these blues and how they could come together. There's a lot of small detailing in the texture. You can see this panel looks like it got kind of banged up and the paint layer is kind of scratched away. I view it as continual confidence building. Like this is good, now it's getting better, now it's getting great. And so the moment there was, okay, which one do we pick? Because they're all so good. And um, that's, that's where the, the partnership comes in. Monique sharpened her pencils, got her team together, and we went to Warsaw to CD Projekt Red. I remember feeling like, I hope we got this right, because, you know, we walked in with a bunch of concepts. When we first started designing Cyberpunk, we kind of underestimated it. Are you guys excited to see this? Yes, totally. It's been a while. Totally. Okay. Oh, nice. So, oh my God. You guys remember this? Yeah. yeah. I remember all the meetings. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is real. This is so awesome. Cyberpunk is incredibly varied and rich. There is no one style. Everything that coexists. Psycho gangs, uh, corporations, cyberpunks, mercenaries, uh, netrunners, uh, rocker boys. You have a rich district, you have a bit poor district, you have something between, and like it's colliding all the time. So there's so many different things that we came to a conclusion that it's simply impossible to develop a one single visual language to describe all of that. And we end up with four distinctive, completely different visual styles. We decided that the console should look like the city. It should be exactly this eclectic mix of different styles uh, present on a single uh, object. 
kitsch on the front face of the console and neo-militarism on the back face. Why those two? This is like this yin and yang composition. Those styles cannot exist without other. It starts with the form. In the case of, of using the Xbox One X, uh, there's surfaces to play with. So what Monique did is she took these two layers and started to use them as canvases to express dis different elements of the game. All these panels are from different pieces of equipment, which is why you see the different um, tags and labels. For example, here we can find military. Those ankle electronics, well, those are like operated brains. Each one means something, like be careful. There are like more information about components. This is like a product label on the console. You know, you have all this uh, information inside. We imagine that in the world of cyberpunk, this product label would like allow you to see inside the machine. So when the lights go low, this label glows. And it's like this glow from the, from the inside of the Xbox. There's a tiny cyan light that lights up right here. And this is like the first time that we've actually put another light on one of our consoles for a limited edition. It, like there'll be a little pinpoint of light on someone's temple. Kitsch is a, is a mass production. It's, it's a style invented by the people, influenced by the brain dance. Colors are poppy. We are using a lot of plastic, we are using a lot of chrome, we are using all the fancy materials which are not so useful, but they are looking great. It's a mashup of different things, like things that might be cobbled together, like on a street level. It's got to have that punch, but it doesn't really need to make sense. So this side, it's a kitsch, and this side, it's neo-militarism. Those two sides fight each other, but at the same time, they live in a symbiosis. You know, like corporations are hiring uh, cyberpunks for jobs, and cyberpunks need corporation technology to, to exist. These laser etched lines, these super clean, severe, hard edged lines, they're the style of the corporations, the buildings, the equipment. And you can see it's been totally vandalized. So someone just wrote no future, and someone kind of read it in the, like different ways. It means literally no future, so I will live my life right now. There's a big tag of Samurai Band. This is one of the most famous bands in the game and in the world of the cyberpunk. And the small descriptions, where's Johnny? Wake the fuck up, Samurai. We have a city to burn. Johnny disappeared from the face of the planet, but their symbols and their legend remained in the city. He did something to corporations to break the status quo. So we thought that making Johnny Silverhand the main theme for the controller would be just a great thing in addition to the console. This is awesome to see it up close. You know, because, like, first of all, like this asymmetric design. Yeah, that's the first time we've actually done like a mismatch between the triggers, but it's totally from a story perspective. It's it's pretty awesome. So you have this laser etched, super sharp laser etched line, and then this chromed side, and it's marked with Arasaka. Johnny's arm is actually manufactured by Arasaka, the corporation that he hates so much. It's kind of ironic. Johnny's arm is it's chrome, and the flexible parts of it are red. So we uh, we colored the thumbstick base in red, but left the the top silver. We have the samurai symbol on the back. We have no future scratched into the gray side of this controller. It's not just a paint, you feel it. So it's real. To focus on the details and treat it uh, in the right way, then people will remember this, because this makes a good design. At the first glance, you, don't, you might not see the relation between the console design and the controller, but if you know the story, if you start playing a game, you'll uh, you, you figure out that it makes absolutely perfect sense. Seeing this next to the console, this is a full story. Okay, never done this, never done this before. It's just a cable, people will say, but no. I haven't shown it yet. Oh, you haven't? No, I didn't even. I, didn't I love this. The cable. So the HDMI cable, you, know, you plug that in, and um, now you have a physical connection of the console to the game. Like, that was a big deal just to make this colored cable, and it's, it's from the game. I remember the first time we, we mentioned, like, can we have a, a cold wire? I said, what? <laughs> like, we've never <laughs> done that before. Yeah. I'm not really sure. I mean, we broke a lot of our own uh, conventions with this, a lot. You know, even, even down to this, um, the sticker the in the panel. back. We've never had a sticker that's 
that's been yellow in yes. this area before. Like that's that's a big no, deal. No one is actually. looking on the back of the console, but even <laughs> here well, you have. We do. <laughs> we're looking for something like in the Witcher franchise, which is our uh, the Wolf Medallion. We're looking for some kind of symbol that will be kind of representative and uh, uh, matching the the Cyberpunk game, and we found it. It was like a, amazing for the the team at Xbox to be able to explore what we could do with the world that you guys created. So to be able to take that digital world and put it onto a physical product, it, it allowed us to break our own rules about the way that we think about our own products. It's perfect. It's like, it's a game in the form of an Xbox. Yeah. <laughs>